A husband and wife were having a relaxed evening, lounging on the sofa and watching their favorite TV show. The husband, seemingly lost in thought, kept glancing at the ceiling just above his wife's head. Curious, the wife followed his gaze upwards and asked, What are you looking at so intently? He slowly responded, There's a spider right above you. She squinted and replied, I don't see it. He said, It must have dropped onto your head. Panicking, the wife leaped from the sofa, shaking her hair out and shrieking. Seizing the opportunity, the husband quipped, While you're up, can you get me another beer? A farmer had three sons. One day his oldest came to him and said that since he was graduating from high school, he would really like to get a car. His father said, son, come here. He took him to the barn, pointed to the tractor and said, this tractor is needed for the farm. And I promise as soon as it's paid for, we'll get you a car. The boy was not too happy, but was understanding. A week later, his second son approached him wanting a new two-wheel bike. Well, the father said, as soon as the tractor is paid for, we'll see about getting you your bike. Shortly after, his youngest was bugging him for a tricycle. Again, the father gave him the lecture about the tractor needing to be paid off first. While leaving the barn, the young boy, a little disgusted with his father's explanation, saw the farm rooster mating one of the hens. He promptly went over and kicked the rooster off the hens, back mumbling to himself. His dad asked, Son, now why would you do something like that? He didn't do anything to deserve that. The third son replied, Hey, nobody around here rides anything until that damn tractor gets paid off. <laughs> Two rednecks, Dale and Billy Ray, were walking downtown, window shopping. Suddenly, they see a sign on a store, which reads, Suits $10 each, shirts $2 each, trousers $3 each. Dale says to his buddy, Billy Ray, Looky there, we could buy a whole gob of these, take them back to Arkansas, sell them, and make a fortune. Just let me do the talking, because if they hear your accent, they might think we're ignorant, and not want to sell that stuff to us. I'll talk in a slow Texas drawl, so's they don't know we is from Arkansas. They enter the store. Then, with his best fake Texas drawl, Dale says, I'll take 50 of them suits at $10, hundreds of them their shirts at $2, and 50 pairs of them their trousers at three dials. I'll back up my pickup and... The owner of the shop interrupts, You all are from Arkansas, ain't ya? Well, yeah, says a surprised Dale, how come y'all know that? The shop owner replies, Because this is a dry cleaners. <laughs> a pregnant woman falls into a coma while giving birth. After some months, she finally regains consciousness and realizes that her pregnancy belly is gone. She looks up and sees a doctor standing next to her bed, greeting her. Hello. You have been in a coma for six months, says the doctor. But don't worry, he continues. You are in good health, and you will be released soon. Anxiously, she asks him, Doctor, what happened? What happened to my baby? Don't worry about it, reassures the doctor. The birth went very well, and your babies are alive and healthy. Babies? The woman asks. What do you mean, babies? Ma'am, you had twins, a boy and a girl replies the doctor. That's wonderful, exclaims the woman. Where are they? Can I see them? Your brother has been taking care of them since their birth. My brother? Oh no, but he's an idiot. What did he name them? The woman asks. He named the girl Denise, the doctor says. That's not so bad, the woman replies. That is actually a very pretty name. So what did he name the boy? She asks. The doctor pauses, then replies, De nephew. A woman feeling a tad suspicious one evening decided to go through her husband's phone. She saw some contact names that raised her eyebrows. The sweet one. The star in my life. My heart's delight. 
Feeling a rush of jealousy, she quickly dialed the sweet one, only to be greeted by her mother-in-law's voice. Flustered, she then called the star my life, and was surprised to hear her sister-in-law answer. Taking a deep breath and bracing herself, she dialed my heart's delight, and was met by the familiar ringtone of her own phone. Tears streamed down her face as she realized she'd wrongly doubted her husband. To make amends for her suspicion, she handed over her entire month's salary to make up for it. Gratefully accepting the money, her husband later went out and bought a lavish gift for his girlfriend, whose contact was discreetly saved under. Bob from the gym. <laughs> A man clearly having had a few too many drinks stumbles into a bar through its main entrance. He weaves his way to the bar, takes a seat on a stool with a loud hiccup, and signals the bartender for another drink. The bartender, noticing the man's state, kindly says, Sir, it looks like you've had more than enough tonight. I can't serve you any more alcohol. Would you like me to call a cab for you? The drunk man blinks in surprise, mumbles a few words of disagreement, and eventually makes his way out the front door, grumbling all the while. Not long after, the same man makes his entrance again, but this time through the side door. With a bit more determination, he marches up to the bar, demanding a drink. The bartender, with a touch more firmness in his tone, tells the man, I'm sorry, but I really can't serve you. It's for your own good. How on that cab? The man glares at the bartender, mutters a few choice words, and stumbles out the side door, shaking his head in frustration. To the bartender's astonishment, just a few moments later, the same man comes barging in through the back entrance of the bar. He clambers onto a bar stool, tries to straighten himself, and with a defiant tone, demands a drink yet again. The bartender, now quite exasperated, says sternly, Sir, I told you already, you're too drunk. I can't serve you. If you don't leave now, I'll have to call the police. The drunk man, looking genuinely puzzled and a tad defeated, stares at the bartender and asks, Man, just how many bars do you work at? <laughs> in a quiet town in Arkansas, there was a small pharmacy where Leroy worked. He was a kind-hearted man, but had a knack for not being the best at finding items customers wanted. His boss, Arnold, was getting increasingly frustrated with him. One day, Arnold pulled Leroy aside and said, Leroy, I appreciate your efforts, but if you miss another sale, I might have to let you go. Just then, a man walked in, his face red and coughing persistently. He approached Leroy and said, I need your best cough syrup, quick. Leroy, a little panicky and not wanting to lose his job, searched the shelves but couldn't find the cough syrup. An idea popped into his mind. He grabbed a box of laxatives and handed it over to the man, advising, Take the entire box in one go. Trust me. Confused but desperate, the man followed Leroy's advice and soon after stepped outside, standing rigidly next to a lamppost. Arnold, who had been watching from a distance, walked over to Leroy, demanding an explanation. Leroy, why on earth did you give him laxatives when he needed something for his cough? Leroy, with a sly smile, pointed outside at the man standing as still as a statue and said, Look at him, boss. He's way too scared to cough now. Two men are driving through London when they get pulled over. The police officer walks up and taps on the window with his stick. The driver rolls down the window and whack. The officer smacks him in the head with the stick. The driver asks, what the hell was that for? The officer answers, you're in London, son. When we pull you over, you better have your license ready when we get to your car. The driver says, I'm sorry, officer. I'm not from around here. The officer does a check on the driver's license, and he's okay. He gives the man his license back, walks around to the passenger side, and taps on the window. The passenger rolls down the window, and whack. The officer smacks him on the head with the stick. The passenger asks, What did you do that for? Just making your wish come true, replies the officer. The passenger asks, Making what wish come true? The officer replies, I know that two miles down the road, you're going to say to your friend here, I wish that asshole would have tried that shit with me. <laughs> hey God. You're so awesome, Lawrence Liu. Hey 
It's Lawrence Lim with the W. Please, whatever. Just do it!